I'm Bruce Grace, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco. And today I want to talk to you about the MicroTorque Focus 6000 controller. We're going to walk through the different ports on the back, the different ports on the side, the buttons on the front, and then walk through the menu options on the screen so you have a better understanding of what it's capable of and what everything is. Let's dive into it. The MicroTorque Focus 6000 is a compact and intuitive controller that works with all of our MicroTorque electric screwdrivers. Let's take a look at the ports on the back. On the top left, we have the external power supply port. To the right of that is where you actually connect a tool cable for connecting a tool to the controller. To the right of that is the ethernet port for communicating with the controller using ethernet. And then on the top right is a place where you can connect an ESD grounding strip for the controller. Below the power supply port is where you connect for digital I.O., supporting 12 inputs and 8 outputs. To the right is a port for our smart integrated vacuum pump. And to the right of that is a port for our field bus module. Lastly, below the field bus module is a port for serial connection. Now let's move to the side of the controller. Here on the top, we have a USB device port for communication with the controller. And on the bottom, we have a USB host port for things like connecting a scanner or exporting data and results. If we flip around to the other side of the controller, you'll see a closed port here, which is actually where the IEM, or the brain, of the controller is placed. It looks like a micro SD card, and this is what actually gives the controller the functionality for your application. Now that we have a better understanding of all of the external ports, Let's walk through the menu screens of the controller. When you first power up the controller, you're going to see a results screen. So here I've actually already completed a rundown and you can see some of those results. The first screen you see here gives you the actual torque and angle of the tool. Now by scrolling left and right, you can actually see different results screens. To the right, you can see the different step results. You can see the graphs. This screen is if you had a batch sequence activated, you could work through the different steps of the batch. And then here's a customizable screen for results. Now, to get to the P-set selection, you can do it one of two ways. You can either select up to get to the different P-sets and select OK when you have the one highlighted that you want. Or you can go to the main menu by selecting the back button. Results is what we just took a look at, but here is the tightening. If we select OK and select P-set, you'll see that same menu option. So there's two different ways to get to that. Also under tightening, you can see that you can select a verification program, do a quick programming, and you can actually start and stop the tightening if you're using a QMC or QMT tool where you don't actually have a trigger. Now it's important to note that quick programming, you can only set the target torque and the speed. You're not gonna be able to set anything else like multi-step tightening or advanced tightening strategies. Let's go back to the main menu. Here's another selection for batch sequence. So here you can select a batch, and then once the batch has been selected, you can actually reset that batch, reset the batch sequence, and then you can move in increments throughout the batch. The bottom left is for importing and exporting using USB. Selecting OK, you can see here that you can export all kinds of different data, like graphs, results, configurations, software, events. You can also access this menu screen simply by inserting a USB stick into the port on the side. As soon as you do that, you're going to be prompted by this same menu screen. The last menu selection is configuration, so if we select OK, you can see here that there's a bunch of different options, such as controller information, giving you any pertinent information you need about the controller. Battery information. Now, this is only if you're actually connected to a portable station and using a battery for the power source. Tool information, giving you important information about the tool, like the serial number, model, etc. Connection information will tell you what you're connected to at that time, whether it be serial or have a USB on the side or any of the different connections that you can connect to the controller through. IP configuration, you can actually set up the IP address for connecting. ToolsNet 8 configuration is the same. You can set up your ToolsNet IP address. 
Digital I.O. is going to give you a menu selection for being able to see when an I.O. is actually activated. And then select source. You can select how the controller controls the tool, whether it be through the controller itself, open protocol, digital I.O., scanner, or field bus. Third party licensing and logout. This is all the different menu options on the MicroTorque Focus 6000 controller. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the MicroTorque Focus 6000 controller. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your Atlas Copco representative. Thanks for watching.